Hi everyone, my name is Khadija Janae. Welcome to my channel. So in today's video, we're doing another affordable luxury apartment tour. This one is on the northwest side of Houston. And although it's nice, it has the luxury features, open concept, all that good stuff, it is not under a thousand dollars. Their smallest one bedroom starts at a thousand and four dollars. So if you can spare an extra four dollars, why not? I do want to mention that even though this apartment is a little bit more pricier than uh, most of my other videos here in this channel, the square footage is actually way bigger, almost an like extra 100 square feet for the smallest bedrooms that they offer. So even though you're paying a little bit more, you're also getting more space. So I think it's a pretty good deal in general. If you are new to my channel, I create lifestyle content. So that consists of home, apartment tours, home DIY projects, stuff like that beauty and skincare content and then some fashion content so if those type of videos interest you make sure you are subscribed and turn on my post notifications so you're notified every time I drop one of your favorite videos all right so like I said we're touring a one bedroom apartment in Northwest Houston the complex name is 9150 I've already posted a TikTok about it um show you guys what the inside looks like and it's so gorgeous quite a few people were able to guess which one it was or which apartments they were so I'm guessing these are pretty popular their smallest one bedroom is advertised at $1,004 for 733 square feet most of the one bedrooms I've done here on my channel usually starts around if they're having a special 900 and something or somewhere close to a thousand but you're getting about 600 and something square feet like 650 square feet um, it's usually like the average so you're getting more square footage for a little bit more money so already the payoff is a lot better than some other apartments um, that have similar features also I want to say the property was built somewhere around October 2015 so it's a fairly new property all right so as you're walking into the apartment you do get a hallway so this hallway leads you into the rest of the apartment but we're going to talk about what's in front of us right now so you do get a closet to your right hand side all right so as you walk in you do get a closet where you can hang up this is a cold closet you can use it as additional storage you also get a full-size washer and dryer it's not like in an enclosed room but you do get like some space for your washer and dryer and it's very convenient as you're walking down the hall you do have your bedroom bathroom and master closet to the left but i'm going to keep straight into the living room and the beautiful kitchen that has this spacious island it's so massive um it's enough to have bar seating you have your sink and then you also have your dishwasher and plenty of cabinet storage you have drawers and cabinets underneath the um sink so just it has this kitchen is by far the biggest kitchen i've seen in a one bedroom you are looking at square footage rise i believe this is 775 square feet and this space is huge you have your standard stainless steel appliances granite countertop hardwood flooring yellow push field it has those same cabinets that i feel like every luxury apartment has that little dark I need to find a color. It's like a dark cherry with the gold, not the gold, but the silver bars. I have the exact same cabinets, and um, I feel like every apartment that's considered luxury has these features. This is an open concept apartment, so you do get an open layout from the kitchen to the living room. And as you can see, the living room is a great space. You can add a sectional, coffee table, side tables, a desk, TV game console area anything you want can be added to this living room and you can still have plenty of space to do you know to relax or do whatever you want to it moving into the bedroom this is a queen size bed it looks like so the bedroom is on a small side you still have room to fit like a side table or maybe two side tables a dresser and maybe some decor that's about it you don't get a closet in the room the closet is actually in the bathroom the bathroom is a great size sink space is We'll say standard it's not like a lot of sink space but you do have enough space to kind of put some of your favorite everyday bathroom products you do get a nice big bathtub to soak in and then on the other side of the bathroom you have your closet so nice size walk-in closet and then just like that we are back at the hallway so we went into a full circle um I do apologize I was rushing when I did this apartment tour and then I thought I was recording a lot of content and I really wasn't I do want to talk about um, something that I think is very important when you're looking into apartments and uh, one of those aspects is not just what the apartments look like but also what are current residents or previous residents 
has said about the particular apartments that you're looking into. So for this video, I will add a little customer review segment where I'm talking to you guys about how you can use customer reviews to really try to um, narrow down what apartments that you're going to at least go look at. For me personally, I don't look at anything under three stars. These apartments had 3.5, I believe. So the majority of the reviews were good. This is a fairly new property as well. I wouldn't expect a new property to have negative reviews in the first place. They did have some, and I'll talk about them in a second. But um, that is the end of this apartment tour, and we're gonna go ahead and dive right into customer reviews. All right, so for me, when it comes to customer reviews, I look at a few things. I personally like to look at Google reviews. I just feel like Google reviews are just more accurate. They're more up to date. Not only can current and past residents leave their review, but pretty much anyone can leave a review, but also the property owners and the property managers can also chime in and comment to the reviews or they can also update the information to make their website and just information about their property more accurate. Me personally, I look at, I would say three major things that I look at when it's apartments. I look at pest complaints. I don't do roaches, I don't do bugs, I don't do no type of critters. So if I see too many complaints, not doing it. Number two would be the um, maintenance. Maintenance is something else that I also look into when I'm um, looking at where I should move. Are the maintenance requests pretty fast? And then I also look at the property managers. Are they really doing their job? Oh, and then the fourth one, which I completely forgot about. The fourth one would be how safe are the apartment complexes? So that's really, that's like the number one thing. How safe it is, bugs, maintenance, and property managers. All right, so I did take a look at the reviews here on 9150's Google reviews, and the more recent ones were negative, and what they had to say mainly fit into the property management category. A lot of people seem to complain with the way the leasing office kind of run, kind of do business. Seems like they don't seem to care, and I'm gonna talk to you guys about that, but first, before I get too, too in, into it, I did see like two negative reviews that talked about um, theft and this is a common complaint that I see across all apartment complexes well not all but usually apartment complexes under four stars I usually see this a lot um, more expensive apartments tend to have a look stricter security especially when it comes to um, the parking garages or the parking lots they're a little more secure I feel like highly populated areas increased risk of things like theft happening. You can't, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, that's just what happens. I'm from a small town. The crime rate in my small town was significantly lower than the crime rate in Miami. When you're living in a house, usually you're on the street. You have your neighbors. Um, for my parents, my parents know my neighbors on a first name basis. They know what cars they drive. They know what they do for work and when they go to work, when they come home. They know their kids. They know all the guests that come around the house. So they pretty much have a closer relationship to their neighbors than so I would. I don't talk to my neighbors at all. I'll speak, but at the end of the day, there's so many people that live in this one building that there's no way I could keep track of who lives here. So with that being said, I have neighbors in front of me, below me, above me, wait, below me, above me, to the left of me and to the right of me. They may decide that they wanna have guests come over and between all of those people, there's no way of me knowing who's an actual resident or not. Some people may look familiar, but at the end of the day, I don't really know who lives here and who doesn't. So with that being said, it's a little easier for criminals to just come in or you know, thieves to just come in and just kind of steal things because it's like, who would know if you're a resident here or not? So keep that in mind. Most, I feel like a lot of apartments have an issue where their cars are getting broken into, they, the parking lot, Cars are getting broken into, cars are getting stolen, cars have been left on bricks. Like, I've seen it at every single apartment that I've moved to, um, and most of those apartments have been above three stars, so it's like, it's kind of, it's something that you would expect. The only thing you can do is put yourself in a position to where you are not leaving valuables in your car, or you're just trying to minimize a reason why someone would want to break into your car in the first place. 
that's really the only help I can give you. But being that you live in an apartment complex with a whole bunch of people, you can't really control if someone wants to break into your car or not. Or I take it seriously if there's a lot of the same car break-in comments. But other than that, if it's one or two out of 10, 15 um, negative comments, I don't really pay that much attention to it. Another complaint, which is this was the most complaints, negative complaints that I've seen on Google reviews for 9150 was that the property managers, or not even just the property managers, the property staff just don't seem to care about their residents, um, whether it be a maintenance, a maintenance request or, or potential residents feeling like they haven't been treated equally or fairly. So I'll say this. As someone who's worked in corporate property management for over three years for multiple companies, I will say that there may be some here and there um, property managers that just really don't care. Um, but you can always get ahead of the situation. And one way to get ahead of the situation, actually two ways to get ahead of the situation. Well, one way to get ahead of the situation and another way if that fails um, would be to be nice. Um, if, if you're looking into an apartment and the leasing agent has an attitude, it's not really much you can do about that. They're having a bad day. It has nothing to do with you. Um, for me, I wouldn't move anywhere if the leasing agent doesn't make me feel welcome as a potential resident. So if they're not pleasant, if they're not nice, if they're not trying to um, get to know me a little better, I'm more than likely not going to apply there. Um, but if they are pleasant and they are nice and I do sign and I'm moving and now I'm a resident, go to the leasing office, speak to them, say hey, ask them how they're doing. I've brought cookies before. I bought the security guy um, dinner, Chick-fil-A dinner one time. Because at the end of the day, when you're nice to them, they're going to be nice to you when you meet them. We're not supposed to have our trash cans out after a certain time and if we do, we get fined. I probably, every single time I get fined, my fines always get waived. I've never paid a fine. As many times as I leave my trash outside, I've never been fined. And that's because the leasing office knows me and I've already established like a good relationship with them. So if anything happens, they're like, now Kadisha, you know you're not supposed to have a trash can out. I'm gonna go ahead and wave it this time, girl, please remember. Or like if I need a light bulb fix and they have five other jobs before them. You know, a lot of the times maintenance, they know me. We have a good relationship. You know what? Let me go ahead and get you a new light bulb real quick. It's only gonna take two minutes. I can kind of, you know, skip everybody else that's been waiting just because they know me. And it's like it's one of those things where if you take care of them, they'll take care of you. So if the managing staff are still just you're being pleasant to them and they still kind of just don't, they're acting like they don't want to do their job, they don't want to be there. The next step is go to corporate. I worked in corporate, I've seen it plenty of times. When it gets to corporate, that's where it usually stops, unless it's something way bigger and they have to get a lawyer involved, that's a different topic. But um, usually if you've been contacting the leasing office to get something done and they haven't been doing it, get corporate involved. Nine times out of 10, your property manager's supervisor, which is usually called a regional supervisor, they get it done like that. They don't play around. They, so when it gets to corporate, then nine times out of 10, the CEO has to hear about it, the CFO has to hear about it, and those are high-level people They don't have time to deal with complaints. So a lot of times, a lot of requests, if it's not being done at the property level, regional level, regional supervisors, they can take care of it. All you have to do is just make sure you go to your apartment complex's website, scroll all the way down. Whoever manages that property usually would be down in the bottom of the page. Find out the name. Um, some of uh, the popular names on the top of my head are Graystar, Alida Ryan, Richdale, I think that's the name, Camden is a popular one, Tarantino, Adara, Axiom, uh, that's say everybody, Graystar, that's say that. Those are the ones off the top of my head. Usually one of their names will be down at the bottom um, or something, some type of name like that, some type of realty group or property management group or something like that just copy and paste their information in Google so you can get their contact information 
give them a call, explain what the situation is, ask to speak to a regional supervisor. Regional supervisors are the bosses of the property managers. So if you're having an issue, it's not getting resolved, speak to a regional or some type of supervisor that's over um, those apartments that you live in. And they should be able to help you a lot faster than the property managers would. Um, like I said, this is my own personal experience of working at the corporate office. The issues usually stop at the corporate office and we usually have a deadline to fix it within days, like less than a week. So, all right, that's all I have for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you all got some really good information and some good tips on looking for apartments. If you are not subscribed by now, why aren't you doing it? Why haven't you subscribed? Please click the button for me and also turn on my post notifications so you're notified when I drop the next video. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next